Hi everyone and welcome back to another video and today I'm going to go over the five main branding pillars. I mention them all the time, I did do a video ages and ages ago that included them but it just feels very old and ugh. So I just wanted a nice shiny updated video about the five main branding pillars and I will go into more depth. In, on each of them. Please remember to subscribe if you're new here. I do make videos regularly on branding, visuals, social media for independent music artists. So if that is you, then please stick around and join us. I also have courses available, branding and social media for our release campaigns, so please check those out, but let's dive right in. Okay, so as a musician, your music will always be at the core of your brand world, okay? And when I say brand world, I mean the authentic you. So you have music right at the core of your brand world. Um, that being said, you can define your distinct sound. So sound is the first of the five main brand pillars. And if you can figure out a couple of words or a short phrase that actually communicate your distinct sound, that is very useful to you. A lot of the social media platforms nowadays have a very short space in the bio. If you are wanting people to visit your profile and stick around and then go listen to your music, then you need to convey who you are on those social channels. So if you can include maybe that short phrase of your genre, in your bio, then it instantly gives it people like, oh, okay, yeah, I, I will like that, I want to go listen to that. Like Billie Eilish has Sad Pop, Sad Pop kind of encapsulates her distinct sound. So that is something definitely worth doing, in my opinion. And the second main brand pillar is visuals and aesthetic. Having a consistent visual, again, a lot of social media platforms are very visual. Maybe if you're big on Twitter, then it's less concerning for you. But specifically Instagram, even TikTok, it's very visual heavy. So you want some kind of authentic, consistent visual. With all these brand pillars, be authentic and consistent. That is the main, they are the main points to remember. Make sure that everything comes from an authentic place and be intentionally consistent with it. In terms of your aesthetic and building one, then an aesthetic is basically made up of visual elements that you are consistent with. And this could come from a range of things such as color scheme, photography style, editing style, hair and makeup, fashion and accessories, even like a theme, like a recurring theme, like say nature. Um, there is a whole host of ways you can build an aesthetic and it can be a minefield, but just have a look at what visuals you are inspired by, what visuals you genuinely like, and then go from there. Um, but if you can get even three elements, maybe a colour scheme, a photography style and something else, that already uh, is, you're already on the way to forming this aesthetic that people will learn to recognise you by. Also, facial expressions and poses are really good ones as well. Signature facial expressions, poses, easily come through in music videos, in photo shoots, in even candid photos. Um, really good one, really good one. You can also consider a logo and fonts. It depends on your brand. Um, again, these videos are very general. Everyone is an individual, so maybe a logo and fonts and actually the digital visuals will be more geared towards you. So consider that as well. There is a whole range of things within visuals. So you're going to have to just look at what is right for you and see what comes to mind. The third main brand pillar is values. So this is what you care about. It could be super lighthearted things like promoting fun, individuality, authenticity. It could be more serious political issues, tackling racism, anti-bullying, um, climate change. It could be literally on the spectrum from really lighthearted to super, super serious. It doesn't matter. You can have more than one. Again, what do you genuinely care about and what are you willing to use your platform to actually shout about and share information on? Um, that is your values. Uh, and it is good for creating content around. It's good for letting people get to know you better that kind of thing. Plus, you can actually make a difference about something you care about once you have an audience, and that's really powerful. The fourth main brand pillar is your communication style. So this is how you communicate, and this is goes into everything. So like your website bio, your social media captions, how you talk to the camera, how you talk on stage to fans, to your audience, 
off stage to fans on a one-to-one -one basis, how you respond to comments on social media, like make sure again that all this comes from an authentic place for you as an artist or a band. So if you're a band, you need to have some kind of agreement guidelines on how you're gonna communicate. Are you gonna swear? Are you gonna use slang? Are you gonna use emojis? Think about how your captions look as well, like the written form of communication. Like are you using capitals, lowercase? Uh, all kinds of punctuation. There's a lot of creative things you can do there. Check out the 1975 for interesting takes on that. And the important points to remember here is just consider your audience and consider the environment you want to create within your live show. So if you are, I have mentioned this before, if you are really like intellectual, intelligent, articulate, wordy, and you want to talk about serious issues um, on social media, but your live show, you just want people to have fun and let loose, then there's a little contrast there between communication style. Um, so just make sure that the environment you want to create within your live show matches your communication style and that it's suited to your desired audience as well. And the last and fifth main brand pillar is your story. So the whole point of growing a fan base organically on social media to get your music out there how you do that is through connection, is through letting people get to know you and then they therefore invest further into you and your journey and your music. So your story is a really important point for that. As soon as someone knows something personal about you, they instantly connect on a deeper level. So your story is a really, really good one for letting people get to know the real you. Obviously, you can have boundaries within what you share. But have a look at your story from when you started your influences in music to where you are now and see if there are any main events or hurdles you've overcome, anything that you want to share um, and then look at the, the story as a whole as well and just think, okay, how can we share either the whole of this or bits of it through content? So that will be through snippets, through captions, starting conversations, it may be one big long interview, I know some artists, even actors, comedians, you don't know their story and then one day they do this big life interview and you hear it all. So just figure out a way that is right for you to do it and just be aware that people learning about your story helps them to connect with you on a deeper level and that connection is what is going to get you like followers to fans to super fans, like that journey is helped along by getting to know you obviously still have boundaries in place, that is a good thing too. Okay, so this is the start of your brand world. Music is always at the core, the most important thing. These things come in as other dimensions. You can then add more to these main brand pillars. Your likes, your personality traits, anything that you feel is like a dominant part of you, your authentic self, add it in and be consistent with it so people learn to associate that with you. That's the whole point. Again, they get to know the real you. So be authentic and consistent. And remember as well that these elements uh, won't all be level necessarily. Some artists will be very visual heavy. Some will be communication heavy and you know, the others too. So just remember that they don't all, if you're like, oh, I can't find any values, don't force it because it might be that the other pillars are stronger for you. So just again, lean into what feels authentic. Do you, are you a band who also really love the visual side? The 1975 is an example of that. Melanie Martinez is an example of that. They are both very much love the visual side as well as the music. Um, so just consider the levels of each pillar as well and figure out what is best for you. Specifically, if you're a band, there needs to be some discussion. And then, yeah, so remember, the music is always the most important thing. Obviously, you know that I'm not trying to say that it is not. Um, these unique combination of factors, the individual factors may not be that unique. You may be from London, lots of people are. You may want to, you may care and shout about climate change, a lot of people do, but it's the unique factors once you've got like up to 10 elements with your distinct sound, that is your USP, that is what makes you unique and the more confidence you can have in that and the more you could be intentionally consistent with that, 
the more you will see audience growth because they are connecting with an authentic person or band and that is where they find confidence in your confidence, okay? So you can look at some of my branding case studies. They are examples of unique combinations of factors that on their own are quite ordinary um, and it's them together that makes something really special, okay? I hope that was helpful. I hope that is clarifies a little bit more about these five main brand pillars that I always go on about. It was time to do a new video and here it is. So thank you for listening and watching. I hope this was helpful and I'll see you next time. Bye!